evening. Now in this video I'm going to show you how you can care for Gasteria. Now this was a video request by my wonderful friend Indra here on YouTube. Hi Indra! And she asked me if I could do a video on this. So I said sure, here we go. And I've had this one for, of course, got to be 20 years, so it's a long time. This is one I got the other month. Um, this is called a Gasteria Little Warty, because of its little spots. And they're wonderful plants. There's about probably about 20 different types of these. And they all originate from South Africa. And they, they're beautiful. They're beautiful plants. They're related to the aloe and the, the Hawarthias as well. As you can see, the mark is a little bit similar to them. I'll do separate videos on how to care for aloes and Hawarthias sepi at a later date. So um, tune into that at a later date, guys. Now, um, I'm going to break this down into different sections on how to care for them. So the first one is probably a little bit about Gasterias first. Well, Gasterias are commonly also known as ox tongue, cow's tongue and lawyer's tongue. <laughs> and the reason for that is because obviously their leaves are shaped a bit like a tongue and they're a little bit rough as well. And that's where the, uh, the commonly names for this has come from. And um, the, the name Gasteria is actually a Latin name for stomach. And the reason why they're called Gasteria is because the flowers, when the flowers form, they're lovely, sort of beautiful bell-shaped orange flowers. But they're actually shaped a bit like um, a stomach. <laughs> Apparently they, they say they're supposed to be like a stomach shape, but um, I don't know what you think, guys. But that's where the name has come from, and that's why they're called Gasteria, meaning stomach. Um, and now when it comes to, so about the light requirements of these plants, start off about the lighting. They're a little bit different to normal succulents because I always recommend to people when it comes to lighting as much sun as possible. But with these plants, I would actually say that they're one of the few, and it is the very few, other than aloes and hawarthias and mother-in-law's tongue, that I would actually recommend don't have to have in a south-facing window because they actually prefer to be in a bit more of a shaded spot. So ideally, if you've got an east window or west window, and even a north facing window, if, that's all, if all you've got is a north window, then you'd be quite okay growing these. They'd be fine, guys. Um, but bear in mind with north windows, you may not get flowers and they can grow a little bit leggy. Aloes are a bit like that as well. They grow leggy if you don't give them a lot of light. So as long as the window is bright, ideally a west or east, but if not a north window, they'll be absolutely fine. And... Um, Yes, say if you don't give them the, the main sunshine, they may grow a little bit leggy. Um, and that's it really with the lighting requirements. Now with the soil, I would always recommend a well-drained soil mix. A bit like any cactus and succulent mix would be fine. I always prefer to make my own. And in this case, I prefer to use Johnning's number two. Um, or you can use any soil-based compost that you find works for you. That's a good quality. I prefer that over peat. And um, I'd, I'd mix that then with about 25% perlite or grit and 25% horticultural sand. And when it comes to watering, um, I find with these plants, they tend to, like with all cacti suns, they have a, a dormant winter period, winter rest period. But with some of the South African succulents, they tend to carry on growing a little bit later on in, into the season. Like most of my cacti succulents go dormant from the September onwards. These will probably go dormant more so from the October. So I'd keep probably water, I'd start watering these from the March and and then I would give them probably I water probably then up until the October time. I then keep them totally dry. I overwinter them in my conservatory, which is kept cool at a minimum temperature of about four. Um, they're not frost hardy, so I wouldn't recommend um, leaving them in the garden or anything like that. Um, keeping them dry and cool, minimum temperature of about four, um, there, and um, obviously dry. <laughs> and um, in the summertime with the temperature, if you're keeping them in, obviously in a very bright spot, um, keep them away from intense heat and intense sunshine. That's all you have to really remember. They can take, like, a, like all circles, they can take a lot of heat as well, um, but not intense bright sunshine because they tend to go. Well, as you can see here, this was in my conservatory, and that's why it's gone a little bit yellow there. So if you want really nice green plants, keep them in a more shadier spot, as I mentioned earlier. And now repotting. Now I've got, I'm going to put links down below to how I repot these plants because they're a bit different to normal succulents I find. Now I would really recommend if you can to repot your gasteria even if it doesn't look like it needs repotting 
every single year. And the reason for that is because they have very fleshy roots. And every year these plants regenerate their roots and the old ones die back. And sometimes when this happens, they get all tangled up with the old roots. And when you go to water them again, then you often left, sometimes it's possible to have a bit of root rot. And this is why I recommend repotting every year. And when you do so, separate all of the old roots, cut them all away, and then set the plant aside for a couple of days when, it, when the, roots, the old roots have been cut off. And let the, the roots callus over. And then repot the plant again in fresh, dry soil. Um, and then do not water for a couple of weeks and then water as normal. This will keep the, the plants, fr the, the roots fresh and keep the plant growing healthy. And I say links down below to the video on how I repot these, um, how I repot gasteras and hawarthias and aloes because it applies to all of them. They have the same, same thing going on with their roots in every year they regenerate their roots. So um, check that out guys. It's really important if you see us back growing these plants. Um, and just something what else I haven't covered, oh yeah, feeding. Now when it comes to feeding, encouraging flowers, and I say this with all my succulents as well, and I haven't had tomatoes yet guys, so don't worry, I swear by using tomato fertiliser. And I use it during their growth period when they're actively growing, and I use it with every fourth watering, and I use it at half the strength of what it recommends on the bottle. You can use any type of tomato feed. I personally like to use Maxi Crop, the organic one. I think it's really good quality. And they don't test on animals or use any animal ingredients as well. So, and it's eco-friendly, which I always think is, is an added bonus. So check that out, guys. Um, now, propagation, really easy. As you can see here, when I bought this one 20 years ago, it was the size of that. And over the years, it's formed loads. These are all plantless, all growing at the base. This has come off it here. So if you buy a little small gasteria, and, and over the years, it will propagate itself naturally by its little offsets. And all you have to do then, again, when you repot every year, generally pull them, pull them apart. And you'll be doing this anyway when you're checking the roots and taking off the old roots. Um, you'll see they just naturally come away really easy. And that I also show in my video, which are, the links are down below too. And that's so the most easiest way. They just propagate. If you've got patience, they'll propagate themselves naturally with their offsets. And the next thing is, well, you can grow them from seed. I've never actually grown Hawarthia from, sorry, Gasteria from seed. So I cannot um, say whether it's been a success for me, but um, some, some growers swear they have good success with growing from seed. So um, that's definitely recommended, but not something I've ever done personally myself, so I can't say. And you can also propagate them um, from the leaf cutting. Again, that's not something I've done myself, but you can apparently take a cutting and let it callus over for a few days, bit of rooting hormone, stick it into dry soil, spray it, and it's supposed to really encourage it to root. But um, that's something I might give a try at doing in the future, and I'll let you know how I get on with that, guys. Now, just think of everything I've covered. I've covered repotting, I've covered temperature, covered feeding, I've covered watering, covered the soil, I've covered the light requirements, and a little bit about them, and I think that's it then guys. Oh, they're, they're, and diseases and stuff like that, they get all the common ones like all cacti succulents do, too long to get into, but what they do seem to have, which seems to be mainly sort of on gasterias, I've never really seen it on other plants, I think it is just something gasterias have, they have a chemical inside their skin, which means... If they're accidentally knocked, or if there's a bit of high humidity, they get very prone to black spot. Um, I just see if this, this plant has had it at one time. There's actually one on there. Do you see? Can you see that, guys? A little black spot. Now, it's not. It's, just to let you know, it's very common on gasteria, so it's completely harmless. And it is just caused sometimes a little bit of bruising. It doesn't. It doesn't go into a rot or anything like that. So if you have this, you're better off just leaving it and not getting any spray for it because it's, it doesn't spread. Just something that gas deer is prone to. And I mention that because when I first got into these many years ago, this one, believe it or not, when it was this size 20 years ago, had quite a few black spots. I had it in my, um, when I lived in England, and it was a bit of a damp spot. I think I kept it too wet and it formed all these spots. But as you can see, it, it's recovered really well and it's totally harmless. But I just wanted to mention that. Anyway, sorry for rabbiting on. I was trying to keep my videos as short as possible, but, uh, you know, it's good to get all the info out then. I think I've covered everything. And if you've got any more questions on gasterias, any more help advice you want, guys, leave your comments down below. And um, I want to send you loads of love and loads of happiness and loads of, and loads of love from Ireland and happy growing. Until the next video, guys.